I don't know Hi, it's uh, Paul here from the Amazon Gorillas, and I think we've got Rob up the other end. How are you doing, Rob? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Excellent, excellent. So um, what I'd like to do today, Rob, is, is basically walk through um, ASIN Inspector, and I'll be ASIN Inspector Pro that I'll be walking through. Um, so what I'm going to do is go into detail of some of the features, not all of them, um, but a majority of the features that we will be using to, to try and find products in the second half. Uh, what I'd like to do is look for private label products. Um, so that, that's why we're not going to go through all of the features because ASIN Inspector Pro covers a lot more than just um, private label uh, sort of products that touch, touches on to arbitrage and um, Amazon to eBay flipping, which I'm not going to cover. Okay, so I'm not going to cover that side of it today. So I'm going to focus on uh, private label products for for Amazon. So if uh, if that's okay, I'll um I'll carry hey, on. Hey Paul. Yes. Real quick, what I'll do is let me cover the uh, basic strategy real quick. So one of the things we're looking for with AM, or ASIN inspector is our, our our main thing that we'd like to see in our products is to have less than 150 competitors. So we're going to kind of go through that today. We're going to show you how ASIN Inspector will help you find that and how that will help you move forward. Because what we want to do is we want to find small niches. We want to get into these small niches, dominate them by having a great pay-per-click, by having great listings. And then from there, what we're going to do is get those products in. We're going to run a test uh, launch of it with about 200 products. And then we're going to try to sell those through pay-per-click by making sure our listing's right. And uh, we're going to find out whether or not this product will sell because the bottom line is if this product is on the front page with a pay-per-click ad and you can't sell it, then there's really no reason to be trying to sell it later on because even if it ranked naturally, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't be able to sell. So it's a great way to find out before you spend too much money and buy a thousand units and then you can't sell them. So if you can't sell them, what we would do is liquidate and start over if we could. We might make some improvements and find out any things that people were saying negatively about our product or and try to do those things in our bigger order. So that's basically how the strategy goes. If you like it, then you move on and you keep uh, trying to sell it. So that's what we're going to try to do today with ASIN Inspector and show you how to find those type of products. That sounds perfect. What a great introduction. So, okay, as you can see that uh, I'm on um amazon.com so basically i'm on the us platform here um and and for for the purpose of just walking through the asin and the features with an asin inspector i'm just going to do a, a random search um just so we can pull up some results so i'm going to put in um dog supplies okay so what i'll do now is, is get that um get the search results for dog supplies on the first page can you, you see, uh, now that's populating can you enlarge that paul say that again sorry can you enlarge the screen for us zoom in oh uh, yeah sure sorry okay hopefully that's going to help a little bit so as you can see i've got uh Amazon has, has given me the search results for uh, just the top level random search that I've put in there for dog supplies. Okay, so if I want to start to analyze that, all you've got to do is just go over to um, the Chrome extension up in, uh, I've got too many up here, I know, but uh, just hit the, the Chrome extension uh, for ASIN Inspector Pro. So I'm just going to put that, and that's going to come up with a separate window or a separate tab, and that's going to start to populate all of the information from the search results from within Amazon. So I'm just going to let this populate a little bit. Um, you have to bear with me because uh, being here in the Philippines, the internet is a little bit slower than than what it was or is in America. So we'll just let that populate for a minute. And then I'm going to go through um, a lot of the features and I'm going to do it fairly logically. And once we've done the features and, and, I've, and I've walked through each of the features, I'll put some settings there. And once we've done that, then we should go in and try and find some products on the second half of the, of the presentation. So as you can see, my internet is, is flying along nicely here. Um, so just bear with us. 
But as you can see, we've got a number of different columns at the top right hand side, at the top of, of the search bar coming out. Um, you can scroll over to the right here. You can see more information. I'm going to be going through these in, in detail. Um, but while that's populating out, I just want to bring up the first point, and that is the settings. Now, in the bottom right hand corner, you've got uh, a hammer and a spanner icon which is the options stroke configurations or the settings so if i pull that up um that is now going to to bring up this pop-up window which allows me to now configure exactly what to, what i want to look at okay so i can go through these and toggle these on and off and i can actually move the position now each of these items here is a column okay so it's column header so you can see on the first one here, we've got show ASIN. Well, I think the show ASIN is quite important, so I always keep that on. Um, show parent ASIN, I'm not interested in that. So at the moment, I've got that turned off, okay? Um, and you can go through each of these show link product. And, and as you can see, if I scroll down, there's an absolute ton of information that you could um, actually look at. Um, so when it comes to the weight, now bearing in mind that the ASIN inspector is an intelligent piece of software. In other words, if you go to um, Amazon.ca, in other words, the Canadian platform, it'll automatically configure itself and give you the results in the correct format. In other words, the correct um, the correct weights. It'll it will come up with the correct uh, currency as well. And the same goes for for the UK market. So if you're on to um, dot co dot uk for example it will come up with pounds um, but here you can actually set the weight so i've shown the weight um, in pounds and in kilos now i like to do that because one i like to keep the products under two pounds but when i do the calculations for shipping for example in my mind i know that the shipping cost is going to be around six dollars per kilo that's just the way i work you know being from england that's that, that's the way my brain works um so i i personally have kilos on but you can turn it off you can turn it on um and you can say you can sort this out so you can actually configure it exactly how you want it now once you've configured it it remembers the configuration so every time you launch asin inspector it will automatically come up with the same settings every time. So there's no need to keep going and do this and doing this and do this. Set it once and forget it. Okay, so if you want to reconfigure any time, that's how you come and do it. To close any of these pop-up windows, you just hit the little red button down at the bottom right-hand corner of the pop-up window. Right, so let's go in and, and have a look, and you can see we're, we're still populating over here. Um, but um, let, let me, uh, while that's doing, I can still go in and, and have a look at some of the um, other other features on here. So if I scroll over to the right hand side, you'll see a section called actions, and you and these actions are in the in um, in the icon format. Um, so you've got a little shopping cart there, you've got a camel there, you've got uh, um, a dollar symbol, then you've got a key, then you've got two windows on top of each other. So let me just go through some of these um, in detail. Uh, let me just have a look, see what we're actually looking at over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so I'm just going to pick one at random over there. So if I just um, hit on the the shopping cart, if I just click that with my left uh, mouse button, that's going to bring up another pop-up window. And that, and then in that window, I'm going to read it out just in case you can't see it. The top one there is Alibaba. And that's going to take you direct to Alibaba. So if I just press that, that's going to open up another window. And that's going to start searching for that particular product on Alibaba. Now, sometimes it will be the, the case where you have to, to modify the search terms slightly. Um, just in case there's a brand name, sometimes the, the Alibaba won't recognize the brand name or can't find the actual brand itself. But it will be able to find uh, related products. Um, so it looks like we're actually searching for a, a canine friendly pocket pet first aid kit. So let's uh, see what that does in the background. Um, you can also look for, um, I'm going to bring that up again. It goes straight into Ally Express, for example. 
Um, now, the difference between Alibaba and Ally Express, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but on Ally Express, that is a platform where you can actually order one off, two off, basically very, very low quantities. However, the price is going to be slightly higher simply because you're actually able to buy that convenience. That's more like a convenience store pricing as opposed to anything else. Whereas Alibaba, that is where you start to source your products at um, bulk volume. Now we're talking about 500,000, 10,000, whatever the case may be. Um, and, and nine times out of 10, you're able to, to get to the actual manufacturer or one of the key trading companies in the niche that you're talking to on Alibaba. So that's the difference. Both of these platforms are in, in China, as we know. You can also look on eBay, so you can check to see if this product's being sold on eBay. Now, there's a couple of reasons why we can do that. One, we can do the, um, sort of, there it is exactly. Um, so we're going to have a look at the price break. So once we're doing our price analysis um, and, and competitor analysis, we can start to have a look at things like this. Um, that there is other reasons why we want to be looking into eBay, for example, um, uh, the Amazon to eBay flip, which uh, I've already said I'm not going to be covering. Um, but it doesn't allow you to have that option. Some of the other ones, Toys R Us, again, uh, that's more arbitrage uh, orientated, same as Walmart, Target, Coles, Overstock, and Home Depot. But it does allow you to actually jump into those stores at a click of a button um, just to see if that product's being sold and what it's being sold for. Yeah, so we can actually look at um, sort of various different features of uh, selling prices. Now, let me see if I can, um, another feature down at the bottom here is just to increase the size of the font, which I know this is small, so I'm going to do that here now. Hopefully, that's going to help everyone see that a bit better. Right, so that's the shopping cart um, side of it. So that's the first icon over. The second icon over it is uh, Camel, Camel, Camel. So if I just press that, that's going to bring up a separate tab as well and bring up the results for Camel, Camel, Camel. Now, in Camel, 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 as we'll see in a few seconds, that gives us analytical data from a, a selling point of view over a period of time. Um, so it gives us price history. Uh, come on, load, load, load. And it also gives us sales rank information and, and other product details. Again, apologies for the, for the slow connection on my end. So I'm just going to let that populate in the background while we move on. So that's Camel, Camel, Camel. The next one over is a really cool feature. Um, so if I just press on that, um, and this is the Get Net Payout um, sort of feature. So I'm assuming that we can find something like that over here on Alibaba or Ally Express for um, as I've got no results coming up, I'm just going to guess we can get that for maybe $12. Okay, at a guess. So if I just put in 12 there and get net payout, so I'm just going to press the get net payout. Uh, so if I scroll down, I can actually expand this out. And I know this is really small to see, so I'm just going to explain what we've got here. Um, in this window, we've got the Amazon selling price at $40.82. I've estimated the cost of that particular product as $12. And I'm, I'm assuming as well that that is a landed cost at Amazon. Um, so that covers all of my shipping and everything. The next section down, that breaks down what the Amazon selling fees are. So that gives us a full breakdown of, of this component. Um, but basically, the Amazon selling fees are $16.25. Okay. So that gives us, if we've, we've got a product cost, or cost of goods sold is $12, including shipping everything out into Amazon itself. Amazon fees are $16.25, and net payout on this particular product is giving at $12.57, or a return on investment of 104%. It also shows us the number of sellers on Amazon. It shows us there's two people selling this particular product all right so that's that's really handy that's really useful uh, sort of piece of information that you can get at a click of a button all right so if i move over to the next product that is the little equal sign um i just want to make sure that i'm actually going on that another feature on here is i i, I noticed i just dropped down one if i just double click on the product 
row, that will turn that yellow. All right, so if I'm now scrolling around and moving around the screen a little bit and I, I sort of get myself lost, I know where I am now because I've highlighted this and it automatically shows up in yellow. All right, so this next one is um, the compare price with competitors. Now, again, we've already seen the first shopping cart allows us to look at or analyze that particular product in other selling platforms such as eBay or some of the brick and mortar stores. Um, this particular icon um, compares the prices with Amazon and what else is being sold out there. Okay, so I, I noticed on the last one I was down one. Um, so, you know, we can see here on the Amazon price is now 12. This eBay is being sold for 14. Um, Wayfair is 21.99. Um, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that allows us to actually look at a more pricing analysis um, if we want to do that. The next one over is another really cool feature: is get product keywords. Now, what this is, it actually goes in. If I press that now, it's going to bring up a, another pop-up window. But what that's going to go and do is go and drag the information from this listing and populate that or show me the keywords that people are actually using to find this product. Now this is really cool because that allows us to actually, and we can export this data. So we can export this data and use this to when we're actually looking at building our listing. Because keyword research is a big part of um, sort of generating your listing. Um, and, and this allows us to actually look at potential keywords that we would not have particularly thought of, particularly when it comes to long tail keywords. In other words, more than one word in the keyword term. Uh, so you this, this um, sort of top one here, for example, canine friendly. All right, uh, first response, uh, another canine friendly sort of first aid kit. Um, so you can actually have a look at that and once it's fully populated, you can export this data into CSV file and start to use that or collate this, these, these long tail keywords and other keywords uh, from your research and use that when you're actually building out your listing. Okay, so that's, that's that feature there. The next one over, if you, the next icon over or the action point over if you want to actually open this particular product up into a new separate window itself okay and there's another feature on here get related products so we know that we're looking at um a canine friendly uh sort of first aid kit so if i just get related products that's going to go off and search inside amazon for related style products okay uh, again my internet is 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 super slow so i'm not going to hang around for waiting for that to, to load um, so I'm just going to jump back over to, to the main list over here. Another cool feature is the next icon over is frequently bought together. So if I just pull that, that's now going to think about or go and research with inside Amazon and check what other products are frequently bought with this particular product. Okay. This is a great idea generator for looking for bundles or other other products to actually put into your store potentially and so you can say okay buy this one frequently bought with that so that makes sense to put that as a bundle or source that second product as a complementary product okay and, and again it's, it's good for for generating ideas with respect to uh, we're looking at first aid kit and we, all of a sudden we've got a dog brush all right so let's go down that avenue look at dog brushes and um, grooming accessories uh, for example so again, that's that's another cool feature that you can actually utilize when you're doing some product research. Um, the next item over is is get parent and child. And what a parent and child is, if you've got um, one first aid kit, and that is your parent product, that is your core product that you're actually selling. But underneath that, underneath the main listing, you say, okay, then I've got this in in red, I've got it in blue, I've got it in green. I've also buy buy two buy four all right so you've got what they call a number of different children under that main listing okay so and, and what this does is just in case there's anything like that 
it'll go off and, and tell us. So here, in this particular case, this is no child variations found for this particular product. Now, a lot of time it is different sizes or different colors. You know, they, they would be your children under that main uh, parent uh, listing. The next icon over is inventory on hand. So if I just press that for, for all sellers, <clears throat> all available sellers that's now going to get the available inventory for all of the sellers now we already know there's there's more than one seller on this i think there was two indicated and that's going to go off and, and dig inside the, the listing and what that does is try and or one way to do that is to try and order 999 or a thousand a thousand plus products and what that what will come back with is said no you can't actually order a thousand there's only 427 in stock. Okay, so that that's uh, that's the shortcut way around that. ASIN inspector go, goes off and, and does that automatically for you. Um, but again, um, this uh, my internet is is being a little bit slow here, so I'm going to come off. But saying that, that is one of the settings we can actually set inside the the options configuration. Um, so if I look at that, and if I come down and try and find that um it's going uh, it's going to be in here somewhere um imagery on hand yes i've already got that so i highlighted so i should be able to find that um in my listing already imagery on hand at the right hand side here it's got more than 999 so this guy's quite got uh, so a lot of stock in hand the guy at the top here, um, um, sort of Kong, this is a toy, toy, um, dog toy brand. He's only got thirty six in stock. Okay, but these three here have got more than more than nine hundred ninety nine. That's what it's telling us. Okay, there's uh, one seller down here is almost sold out. He's only got three in stock. All right, so that's what that does. If you don't want a particular listing showing, so okay, I'm not interested in in, in this particular product or kong for example as a brand i don't want to see any kong products you can just x that out so it's just going to remove that from your listing totally okay so they are the they are the features over here um under the action buttons we'll call it the action buttons okay yeah. right so the next the next thing i want to have a look at now we've actually got this page fully populated i'm just going to close down some of these other um tabs that we opened up while we're looking at that um the filters now at the top here we can turn that these are the filters at the top here where we've got the um the, the blank search bars i can turn those on i can turn those off so if you don't want them there's a little toggle um down the bottom right hand corner here and just turn the filters off i like to keep the filters on and i like to keep them on all of the time um because it's, a, it's quite a cool feature that you can use as you're moving forward on your product research um, but let me just explain what uh, what we can do here. So if we've got, uh, so if you know an ASIN, if you're looking for a particular ASIN, uh, if someone says, okay, check my product out, and so I, or whatever the case may be, if, you, if you've done some research, you can actually put your ASIN number here and they'll go off and find it, uh, okay? So, but over here on the product name, so if you wanna see anything that's, um, uh, let me have a look for some keywords down here. Um, I can see something, um, so I'm just um, just highlight this one here. If I can just put in there food, for example, uh, I can do two things now. I can either hit enter, or I can scroll over to the right hand side here and filter results. So if I just filter results, um, that's only going to show me products with food in the title. Okay. Now I couldn't see this because it's collapsed down, but there's a little blue icon there. So if I just click on that blue icon, that's going to expand the title, and as I can see now it does actually have food in the title all right so that that's basically how the the filter works on the product name so if you're looking for anything specific there um i just want to clear that filter for now so two ways of doing that just highlight it backspace and then enter or there's a little yellow brush over here sort of clear filters so i'm just going to clear the filters that way um for now right so let's have a look at some more cool features um from the filtering point of view so if we scroll over here into the more meaningful data i.e estimated revenue uh, reviews and stuff like that 
Um, so if I want to look at something with a sort of reasonable amount of sales per month, so if I only I'm only interested in products that are selling more than three thousand dollars a month uh, in revenue, I can filter that. Okay, so don't forget the more than symbol. So we need the more than symbol. So that's uh, so the pointing to the right. So that's more than symbol, and then we need three thousand. So if we just put three thousand there, okay, and again you can either hit enter or filter the results over on the right hand side here so i just got a filter results that's only going to show me uh products that are selling more than three thousand dollars a month or revenue of more than three thousand dollars a month okay and as you can see i've got a few in there um i'm just going to try and uh, so we've got um maybe one two three four five six or maybe maybe half a dozen maybe ten there if i want to see more okay so there's 10 is not very many so don't forget it's only just bought me the results from the first page so oh, here we go look it's the number of results 11 out of 15 so if i want to go and start search on page two and three and four and stuff like this that's easy enough i don't have to go anywhere all i've got to do is down the bottom on this toolbar down the bottom here there's a little plus sign in a in a circle okay so i'm just going to press that and that's going to go and start to populate based upon my initial filter of more than three thousand dollars per month as an estimated revenue that's going to start to pull in page two okay so if i just press that there's a little spinning arrow down the bottom here wait for that to finish so it populates out more and we should be able to see some more results coming up uh, from page two if there is any that meet the criteria okay so and again that's really important to understand you know sometimes you'll see no results coming up you think hold on a minute what's going on um in my case it's, it's a slow internet but it could mean that there is literally nothing that meets your criteria in that particular search that you're trying to do um in my case it is purely my internet speed um but that's basically what you do and you can see now it's now pulling in uh, 31 results as opposed to the 15 so it's now actually looking through page two of the search results don't forget we were back over here in in dog supplies um so oh oh whoops i've, I've just closed that down so but which is not a major problem not a major problem because ace and uh inspector have already got your back if that happens so sometimes when you're doing your search results you've got all of these tabs open but maybe you'll close some down and you'll close down the core search that you're actually looking for or that link you initially came in from and you can't remember whether it was dog toys dog pet suppliers or whatever the case may be it doesn't matter it got a link down here so this is basically your um sort of link it looks like a link in a chain so if i just press that that's going to open up the actual search that i came in on from amazon okay so we can now see dog suppliers and that's automatically brought back my initial search from the amazon okay so if i just flick over here again um again we just got the 11 from the 31 with more than three thousand. so let's move on to the next field i'm just gonna uh, so i'll leave that one there for the moment and i ain't sure i'm gonna clear that so i'm just gonna backspace um and then enter that so that's just gonna clear that so i've now back to in fact i've got the second page because i hit my cross down the bottom here so now I've got 30, don't forget our X one out, 30 out of 31 results. So let's have a look at the number of reviews. Okay, now our number of reviews, we like to look at something like, um, we obviously want more than one review, more than two. So we can actually do more than, but less than. And we can do that in the pricing as well. Um, so on the reviews, we want more than, I would say more than 10 reviews. Uh, less than now the way to do this you need to add in the the ampersand or the and symbol so if i just add that in then i need to do the less than symbol and i'll do 300 reviews um because i think there's a few in there i'm going to do less than 500 because uh that, that, that should show us a few results here okay so if i just go over to the right hand side now and start to filter the results that's now going to show me only because I cleared all of the other filters. Look at the top, so there's nothing else in there. It's only going to show me the results for 
products with reviews of, apart from the spurious one in here, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, products have got between 10 and 500 reviews. Okay, so, and again, if I want to press more, I can just keep on adding more to the results from here, which I would assume that the more you press this, the you know, page two, page three, page four, they're going to have a lot less reviews. Um, all right, so now that's spinning, that's going to keep on pulling in more information, more data, simply by pressing that, that cross or that plus button down the bottom on the toolbar down there. All right. So that's that's the filter there. Now I just look, wait for that to spin a little bit. Um, but again, we can do the pricing over on the, over on the fees, over on the um, selling price. Now the BB, what we call it, the BB. This is the buy box. This is the actual the the price that the product is selling for. So if I just go over to to Amazon and have a look at this, it's nineteen ninety four. That is um, ironically, this is is by my name, but um, but it, it's it's nine the nineteen ninety four is the price that is the buy box what they call the buy box price okay so if you're wondering what the selling price is you're looking for the selling price it's actually the BB price or the buy box price now again yeah you know, if I if I clear those filters there press enter so it's backspace enter or go over to the right hand side to the yellow brush um, and again you can actually do some uh, filtering here now bearing in mind that when we're trying to do the filtering on prices we are looking for products probably that sell for more than $17 but less than 50 simply because anything less than $17 are going to be very little profit left by the time you've actually purchased your stock ship that stock to Amazon Amazon have taken their fees your profit is not going to be very much in order for you to grow and expand the business because you've got to take out of their advertising costs and reinvestment into build the stock um, for the second, third, and the sequential orders. More than 50, and your initial stock or your stock um, investment could potentially be a little bit too high. Okay, so that's why we try and keep it between the 17 and 50. So again, we can do the, the more than more than 17 and then the ampersand, don't forget the ampersand uh, symbol if you want to add a combination filter. Um, so I'm going to do less than 50. So if we just go over here and filter the results now, and that's going to show us eight out of the 47, because don't forget I pressed that little button, so we're now up to three pages. So if I go over to the left-hand side here, you can see the, the numbers. These are not just random numbers. These are actually the positions of the listing as they show up through the pages. So this first one is on position four, so we know that's on the first page. Um, this one's on position nine, so we know that's on the first page. 14 and 15 and 16, they're on the first page. Um, bearing in mind that we're probably going to get about 16 items per listing when it comes to an Amazon search result page. So 26, we know that these next three are on the, not on the first page. Yeah, they're on um, page two. Um, and if we had any more down here, it would be on uh, page three, page four, for example. So you can actually see where they are uh, from a ranking point of view uh, without getting too mad. When it comes to ranking, uh, you can also see that the rank here um, so that this is the, the rank is the BSR, the best seller rank. Now that is the position that Amazon gives you within a category itself. Now, if I hover over this, and um, if I hover over this, this is this is too small. I can't actually yeah, expand this out. I'm afraid, um, but it tells me the categories that uh, this is actually in. Okay, um, another way you can do that is again come down to the filters um, on the sorry configuration down the bottom right hand corner here if you scroll down I know it's down here so it's got um, the full sales rank so if I turn that on we'll be able to see exactly where some of these products are listed from uh, a product point of view I'll just enter that now well next time I come in that's gonna sh that's gonna show that up but uh, anyway, let's go back to, to the pricing so that we know that we've actually filtered that between $17 and $50. So that's now giving us products that are potentially 
you know, is is in the right ballpark from a costing point of view. All right. So that that's from a filtering point of view. So we've now gone through filters and, and how to actually add a combination filter. Now the key thing is to use the um, the more than or less than symbol as well as the uh, the ampersand in order to get that combination filter working. Now, another filter that you can actually use, you can actually eliminate something. Um, so, for example, you're, you're not interested in anything that's uh, Amazon. Um, so, again, if we come up to here, so the BB seller, so the buy box seller or the, who's selling the product, that shows us an FBA. In other words, you've got uh, stock at Amazon, and um, so FBA are actually handling that. Um, AMZ, which is an Amazon fulfilled product. Okay. Uh, and then down here we've got FBM. Uh, FBM is fulfilled by merchant. If I hover over that, that's going to show me who is selling that. Okay. So if, I'm, if I want to eliminate some of these listings, so I'm not interested in analyzing anything to do with Amazon. So I can just put the, the uh, sort of the minus sign in and then just do AMZ and just press enter. And that's just now removed everything that is sold by Amazon. All right, so that's another way to use these filters. Okay, so let's let's move on um, to to the filters from from the filters to to another couple of features. So I'm just going to remove all of those filters. Now, when it comes to to product research, um, a lot of this is done simply by going into Amazon and looking at the niche that you're interested in from a broad top level point of view and then drilling down getting ideas looking at keywords and then drilling down and i'm going to go into that um in the, in the second part but i just want to touch on a few more of the features um down in in the bottom configuration bar all right so i'm just going to go through some of these we've already had a look at the the plus button which loads more products from the from the additional pages, page two, page three, page four. Okay, so that does that. Now I'm gonna flick over to the, the, the left-hand side. Now we've got to export to, to Excel. So if I wanted to export all of this information, um, I could do that. I can just export that direct to, to Excel, all right? Or if you wanna work in CSV file, you can export this information into a CSV. The next one over, we've already had a look at which opened up the link of the page you initially came in at. Okay, so I, I I accidentally closed this one down earlier, but it wasn't a major issue because I was able to recover that by clicking this open Amazon link of this page. All right, so the next one over is a nice cool feature. Now, bearing in mind that their key search, search term is dog supplies. All right, so that's quite high level. It's not really drilled down much. And, and, and what this next item does, that allows us to have a look at Google Trends. Okay, now as you can see here, the trend for dog supplies. Now this is not for any particular product on the listing. This is for dog supplies. All right, so that's that search term, very top level search term that we're looking at. And as you can see, back in 2005, there was obviously a lot more dog lovers around there are now. Okay, so particularly on uh, Google are seeing this as a slightly downward trend from 2005 to 2017. The other thing this does is pulls up related keywords to dog supplies. Okay, again, this is another area that you can look at for generating ideas with respect to drilling down um, smaller, narrower niche items like rob said earlier you know what the idea here is to find a very tight niche with with not many competitors at all uh, dog supplies is very broad you've got thousands and thousands of competitors all right but i've just used that so i can actually explain the features of asin itself so related keywords and related keywords again not for any particular item listed but for dog supplies Okay, and again, close that out. It's just a little red dot down the bottom right-hand corner. So that's the um, that's the, the keyword generator. Make a new search in Amazon. So that pulls up uh, a separate window here, uh, and you can do it as opposed to going back into Amazon itself. Um, 
you can actually go to a new search here inside ASIN Inspector itself. So I want to go go to, um, for example, make a new search. Okay, so that's now going to go off and, and do its thing and pull up dog chew so i haven't i haven't been anywhere near amazon this is all within inside ace and inspector itself now that new search term i'm getting results for dog chew okay so that's what i've done there so as you can see we've got a totally different set of uh, sort of results on this one okay so that was that um we've already i've already showed you the the increase um font size i think it's as big as it goes um and then you can decrease it if you want um these next two are show the top top bar keep the top bar where it is or, or not and the side left hand column um detach or, or basically keep it there or, or remove it um this particular product if you've got a ton of asins that you've you've been recording down in a spreadsheet somewhere you think you know what yeah i want to analyze that a little bit further on take a copy of it put it in a spreadsheet do some more research find another few products um put it in your spreadsheet and if you've got uh, sort of 10 20 or 100 asins doesn't matter how many you've got instead of just putting them in one at a time you can actually import that list okay so i'll just open that up that's going to bring up um uh another separate pop-up uh window and it's basically you can just copy and paste okay i haven't i haven't got any um sort of prepared um but all you would do is just copy and paste that into that window and it would basically just populate for the key, for the asins itself all right so it, there's no particular search term it's only going to populate the data on the particular asins that you've actually imported all right now this is dog chews okay so i quite like dog chews for example um i don't want to come back to this later because i want to I want to dive into this a little bit deeper so what you would do is as opposed to using your star mark at the top here on on your on your favorites or your bookmark bar do that inside asin so you've got a little star down here and it's got manage your favorites so you can actually pull that up and manage your favorites and i've already got one undefined here i've got hummingbird feeders uh, it was another research um i've done during the week um dog chews yeah i'm going to add that to my favorite now okay so the keyword successfully added to my favorite um if i want to go back and do anything so i want to go hummingbird hummingbird feeder i can just go and hit the the search there and that's now going to go and populate all of the information for my hummingbird feeder all right so these are the um, results that are now being populated there so again it's a really quick and easy way to actually manage your favorite so if you see something you like add it to your favorite you can come back to that anytime you want um and in fact if you just pull that up and you think you know what oh, i saw one in there that was undefined that's nonsense to me i want to get rid of it um so i'm just going to let that come up and, and you can actually x that out. undefined that's obviously didn't do a very good job of saving that one so I'm just going to get rid of it. Okay. So now that's done. I can just close it down. So I've now got the hummingbird feeder and my dog chews that I've just added. Okay. So that's that feature down here. And there's one last feature I just want to touch on before we go and do some product research. Um, if you can, this is the um, sort of the brainstorm or idea generator. Now, for, for whatever reason, if, if you're just coming up with the same same ideas time in and time out you've got a bit of a, a mental block on on trying to do some research you know, you're always coming up with with dog products or kitchen products or um you know, home and garden or it's, I, I can't think of anything else you know you, you just can't think outside of but you've got a mental block for example jump onto this one it's the it's the, um, it's the little light bulb icon down the bottom and that's just going to bring up some random keywords totally random um, and you can have a look at uh, sort of some initial data here, number of products, um, 600 or 6,548 in HDMI cable. Do you want to get into HDMI cables? Well, there's, there's plenty of products related to that. With the, with the average price of $20 and the average rank of around 12,000. So if you're interested in that, you could just go and hit the um, little spyglass over here and go and get some more data 
Okay, so in the background there, you can see that populating. So it's now brought up all of the information for the first page of um, HDMI cables. If you're not happy with that, just go back into the brainstorm again and just hit the, the find new keywords. Now, automatically, every time you bring this up, it will generate about four or five random search terms that you can have a look at. So I'll just let this spin for a bit. And again, this is this is a, sometimes you, you can do this for for a long time and not come up with any results at all. Um, so that, that's a word of warning. However, there are occasions where you'll actually find a, a real gold nugget in here. Yeah, and you think, you know what, I would never have thought of that particular product or, or that particular niche, but the information come up is is really cool. Um, so that does allow you to to actually find some gold nuggets uh, from time to time. If you've got that mental block, if you can't actually work out what type of niche you, you're actually getting into. Uh, again, I apologize for, for the speed of my internet, which is spinning and spinning. So again, we've brought up a, a totally different set of results. Absolutely, right, totally random. No idea what they are. But if you like the look of something, you can just go in there. Um, word of warning on, on anything that's Bluetooth, um, you need to get that certified um, and it has to go through independent third party inspection to, to make that make sure that, that Bluetooth is regulated to the FCC standards in America. So be careful if you're looking at anything Bluetooth. It's just a, word, a side note. Um, not interested in anything else. Just find new keywords and just keep on doing that and keep on doing that until you actually find something. Now, this is not necessarily going to give you the absolute actual gold nugget to go and find, but it's going to give you ideas that you can start to drill down and go off on tangents and go down different rabbit holes um, to try and find that, that research. Okay. So they were the features. I'm just going to close this down now so we can come back into our um, HDMI cables we actually landed on. Um, so these other features here are, are not related to, to anything that we're doing. These are very much arbitrage um, sort of features. So I'm not going to touch on that. Um, so I think I've touched on, on but basically everything there is um, from, uh, from the features point of view. I think you see this, this new one I put in here. This is the full sales rank. Uh, don't forget, I, I actually uh, sort of put that in there at the, at the back end on the settings. Now you can see this particular product is 33. This is one of the HDMI cables, 33 in electronics. Okay, we're drilling down the electronics, camera and photo. Video is 79 in there and 113 when we're looking at electronics, accessory supplies and home and audio. All right, so we can actually see how deep that goes and what positions each of these products holds as the subcategories or they're listed in. All right, so this is a top selling product, one in one in one. Look, um, so that's so I'm going to close it down because uh, I, I suggest that uh, we look at HDMI cables or anything electronics um, to start with. So let's go in and, and see if we can find anything um, from from this point of view. So, for lack of a better term, uh, where we're starting out, I'm going to do uh, JB Kit and see where that takes us. Okay. So um, I quite fancy getting into, in my mind, you know, this, this is the way I work. Got to try and find a particular niche, the particular niche that I'm looking in for. I'm not really sure, but it's going to be healthcare. It's like a shabby kit. I know you may laugh. I've got no hair, but it's it's one of those things that um, I'm quite interested in. So let's see what we can find. So I'm just going to press Ace of the Inspector Pro, see what that brings up. And then we can start to drill down and try and find various different alternative products that we can actually drill down and actually have a look at from a product search point of view. Okay. Now, again, I want to start to add some filters here um, because I know that my selling price, for example, I just need to wait for this to, to populate or move over. So the BB selling price. I definitely, definitely want to be selling products more than seventeen dollars. 
and less than 50. That's the criteria that I want to keep in there. So I'm just going to keep that in there now and everything I do. Now, once you've got a filter in there, if you leave the filter in, it will automatically remember that. So whatever you're doing, that will automatically filter this out. So if I just go over here and filter search results, I've only got the two products. Um, bearing in mind that I'm only on the first page. So if I just drill down uh, on add more products, so I've gone down to the bottom um, on the icon on the plus on the, on the bottom toolbar, don't forget. And that's now going to bring in page two of products um, that meet the criteria, which is more than 17 and less than 50. Okay. So initially, I can see while we're waiting for, for my internet to catch up, I can initially see that these first two products over here were selling for 40, 46, 45. Number of reviews, the top one was 756. That's quite a lot. The second one was only three. However, the estimated revenue is only 500. So he's not actually selling that many. Maybe it's a new seller. Um, maybe he's not very well established, but he's, he's uh, managed to get into to one of the top positions, maybe because of a giveaway that he's been doing uh, or something like this. So, and again, once we're looking at something like this, I've got all of my search results. So you can see one, six, day. Um, right down to um, 60 it hasn't quite populated uh, the second page yet but what we can do is we can actually manipulate the data so we can go to smallest to largest or largest to smallest and I'm going to do that on the estimated revenue so I've gone smallest to largest the largest to smallest and now I can now see what the revenue drop is like versus the number of reviews now not there is a direct correlation between the number of reviews and how many products are being sold. Okay, so the, the ratio about is, is only one person out of 30 that leaves a review. So we know that this particular product is, has sold an awful lot um, in the time. It's selling around 2,000 items a month. Okay, so this is a, a predominant player in the market. Um, something that uh, I'm not really interested in trying to, to go after is well established too much competition uh, Again, if I scroll down here, I can see that the number of re, uh, reviews in this column here is is quite a lot still um, The amount of revenue drops off. So we've got some major players at the top here um, This is not a niche that I, I really want to get into um, actually having reviewed it you know, so it's one of the things when you've got this uh, initial idea, you think, you know what, shaving kits, yeah, great. Have a look at the data. The data tells you this is too competitive straight away. There's no need for me to go in and have a look at second page, third page, fourth page. Uh, I just know it's going to be too competitive. However, where do I go from here? Um, well, that, that's um, that's quite easy because I can go over over to the right hand side here and start to have a look at different keywords. Um, so this is in body groomers. Um, let's see what keywords this one brings up. So again, let that spin. Um, and, and what it's going to do is it's going to go off and pull out all of the keywords that are related to this particular listing. Okay. And again, I'm looking for ideas. I'm looking for ideas now where I can just go off on a tangent and actually start to drill down and find that micro niche which has only got 100, 150 competitors in. All right, so I can see Philips. Philips is a huge brand name. I want to steer clear of anything that's Philips related. Uh, for example, spare parts, replacement parts. Um, that is definitely a product to avoid strategy. Don't go down there. A grooming table, grooming glove. Um, grooming glove. Oh, I've got absolutely no idea, but that sounds quite intriguing. So I'm just going to copy that. Okay, so I'm just going to close that down and I'm going to come over here to make a new search on Amazon. Okay, I'm just going to paste that in and do that new search. And that's now going to pull up grooming glove results inside ASIN Inspector for me.
once that data has been populated, then we can start to look at the filters. Now, bearing in mind that I have not changed or I have not deleted my filter. Now, I've only got one filter in there at the moment. Now, you can have, you can have a number of different filters um, running all at the same time. And if you don't delete them, you, ASIM will automatically remember your settings. And that includes the filters that are in there. So it will automatically, when it populates this, it will only show me the results for products that are selling between $17 and $50, because that is what the filter I have set in the background. Okay. So we just got to wait for this to spin around a little bit. In the meantime, I'm just going to go over here and do a grooming glove and just see what the products look like while I'm, I'm waiting for my internet to, to load the results over here in ASIN Inspector. You would normally see results quicker than this if you're based in the States, for sure. So the speed is a lot quicker over there. But uh, also, I've gone from shaving kit to, to grooming glove. Uh, again, apologize here, guys. So you can see the process that I'm working through in my mind. Um, I started off on shaving kit. I've got all of these uh, really, really competitive products. I'm, I'm in a niche that I do not want to be in, as in that top-level shaving kit. Um, I'm now drilling down and I'm using the data that ASIN Inspector is giving me. So I'm allowing that to, to provide me information that I can use in order to drill down further and find that, that, that micro niche that we're actually looking for. When I'm talking about micro niche, that's just my term with respect to yeah, not many competitors. There's, there's a demand for the product, but not many competitors. Okay, so if we can get a niche um, that's got less than 100 competitors, 150 competitors tops, yeah, that and and there's a there's a demand for that particular product. Okay, that is the type of area that we need to be looking at finding a product in. Looks like I'm hanging over here, guys. So I, there's not a lot I can do about this. I'm sorry. This is uh this is painfully slow. Let me see if I can do a refresh over here. There we go. So therefore I'll do a refresh over here. Yeah, so let me close that. I've now got the results up for grooming glove. Um, that looks like it's taken me over into into the pet products or something like this. But uh, let's have a look anyway, because that's that's the area that we're um, trying to delve into with respect to trying to find that micro niche or an alternative niche that that I'm looking for. Um, now again, it's um, it's bringing up uh, sort of 26 results. So it's 26 results on on the first page here. Now I've lost my filter over here. That's not a major problem because what I can do is um, ASIN Inspector, again, I've got my back covered here. There's a little symbol at the top here. It's probably the last one that I, I haven't touched on. So if I actually press that, that's actually going to reload and recover my last set of filters. So if I do that, you'll actually see automatically there's most of those products have gone. Why? Because my filter's now been reapplied as more than 17, less than 50. So I've only got two products left in there. 
Now, again, if I just want to press the, the plus button, I can do that, and that's now going to go off and pull in additional data from page two. All right. So again, we're going to assume that we've got to wait wait a bit for this to, to spin around a bit. Um, so you can see what I'm actually doing here. I don't think I'm going to find anything in this particular niche. I, I started off um, in the in the in the in the male grooming. Uh, I ended up in in pet grooming. Um, but you can see where one idea leads you from from one idea to another, and and that's not a problem because you know what we're trying to find is that particular product that fits the criteria, as opposed to trying to force a product into a niche that you like or or, or you you really got your heart set on. Um, so again, we we got a few products here, and again, it's it's just throwing throwing up uh, sort of three different results. Estimated revenue here is. It's not much. There's not much money in there. Um, bearing in mind, there's not many reviews either. So this first one is only doing a shade under seven hundred dollars a month. He's only got two reviews. Um, this one's doing six and a half thousand dollars a month. He's got uh, sort of three hundred plus reviews. A thousand dollars there at twenty nine. Everything is else is outside our set criteria. In other words, it's being sold for too little money. My guess is. All right, so again, is this area that we want to get into? No, it's not. Um, so what I'm going to do is this time around, I'm going to pull up Google Trends, have a look at the um, keywords there, see if there's anything that I like there. Uh, dog grooming glove, pet grooming glove, that's not really helping me. So what I'm going to do is just go over to the right-hand side again, have a look at some of these. Um, you know, I may end up in the, in the horse niche, who knows? Um, I'm just going to press the keyword on that particular one and see what else we can do, because um, I'm I, I'm not I'm not um, sort of set on one particular product or one particular niche. I just want to find a product that is good enough to go onto my short list that meets my initial set of criteria. Okay. So we've got a we've got uh, sort of a number of different um, sort of keywords. So I'm just going to read these out because I know that they're really small on the screen. Um, so Hanson, one would assume that is a brand name. So it's a medium bathing grooming shedding gloves. Okay, Hanson bathing grooming shedding glove. So bathing grooming may be a sub niche of a niche. Okay, so we're looking at grooming. We're all of a sudden we've gone from grooming to grooming gloves. And now we're into bathing grooming. All right. So let's have a look at that. Um, see where that takes us. So again, I'm just going to copy that. I'm just going to close that down. I'm just going to do a new search in here. Paste that in. So I'm going to do bathing grooming. I just leave it like that. See what it comes up. I make the new search. So when you're doing this product research, don't have any preconceived ideas with respect to you definitely, definitely, definitely going to find something with the first 10 minutes. If you do, uh, give me a shout and let me know your secret because um, it, it normally takes a little bit of time to, to actually come up with something um, that can go on your shortlist. But don't give up. You know, just, just keep on you know, going down these different rabbit holes. Um, so it looks like um, even though we're we're spinning here and my internet is is uh, sort of lagging, we're not actually coming up with too many results for the search term with bathing. Oh, here we go. We've got a few here now. So we're now into bathing grooming. Um, uh, th there's no way in the world that I would ever ever thought of that on my own. Okay, it's just not an area or a niche that I'm into or, or, or know anything about. Um, however, you know, it may it may turn up something that is worthwhile putting onto your shortlist. Now, when I'm talking about shortlist, um, I like to be able to, or we like to be able to get something like five to ten different products on a list that we can actually go off and do some more in-depth research. Okay, now we've got uh, sort of various different tools and um, analytical spreadsheets that we can use and can run various different products through 
and, and I'll, I'll cover some of that uh, another day. But uh, our super product selector it is available to download. Um, so Rob can give you the link for that later. But uh, I can, that's a different uh, that's a different walkthrough for a different day. But it allows you to to get your shortlisted products analyzed in more detail. Okay, so that's basically what we're looking for. Now, this particular product at the top has got six thousand five hundred uh, estimated revenue. It's selling. 285 uh, a month it's got a rating of 4.6 and it's got 338 reviews i'm quite interested in that because then because of the numbers okay so that's that's something that i may well actually put on a short list in order to go off and dive in um and, and do a little bit more research on um i haven't got enough the information now in order to tell me that this is a good product or not um i don't know um but initially, when I'm looking at the estimated revenue, you know, bearing in mind that the the rule of thumb, the basic rule of thumb, if you divide everything by three, right, it will tell you that the following. Okay, so get call it six thousand. Okay, so it's two four six two thousand for um, product cost, two thousand for profit, two thousand for advertising, or there or thereabouts. Okay, so if you're doing six thousand a month, that's that's basically what that breakdown is. So this is why we say we don't really want to be selling anything that's uh, it's like five or six dollars, you know, because you just you haven't got enough profit in there. So if you've got the six dollar profit, you're only you're only making two dollars out of that. You've got to take um, you've got to take some money out of that as well. Um, so it's it's not ideal to to be selling the, the cheap end products. So six and a half thousand. That that's that's all right. That's, I'm quite happy enough to be doing that. Um, so where are we from a, a page point of view? We're on the first page. Uh, we're on the top position now. Um, is there enough? Is, is there enough money in there in the whole category? I don't know. This is something that I'd need to de delve into. But this particular product, for example, so if I wanted to go and open that into a separate window, I would just come over here and just press the icon. Don't forget. Okay, so that's now going to bring that up into a separate uh, sort of window. And I can now go and get related products to this um, bathing, grooming, shedding glove. Okay, for livestock, stroke, pets. So again, it's now bringing up related products. Okay, so you can see the direction I'm going. I'm going, I'm jumping from one idea to the next. And once I've got something, I shall then go down and, and dive in a little bit deeper with respect to what is that all about. And ASIN allows me to do that very, very quickly and, and analyze the information instantly. Now, we get asked a lot of questions with respect to this, this estimated revenue um, and how accurate is that? Um, well, the answer is that uh, the guys that uh, or the rocket scientists at ASIN Inspector Pro um, work on their particular algorithm. And this is updated, um, I wouldn't say it's live, but uh, so many, many times a day. Okay, right, so it's virtually a live update all of the time. And they're constantly working and tweaking and making sure that, that is the most accurate information that they can actually provide us. Okay, so that that's that's basically all I can say on that one. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So we've now we're now um, sort of pulled up that first particular product, which was this uh, sort of um, grooming glove, and we pulled in related different products. Now you can see some of these um, are under our desired target price; others are over our desired target price simply because when i've actually pulled that new data up uh, it didn't have my filters very very easy to go and do don't forget you just go over on the right hand side here and just recover and apply last set of filters and there you go okay so we've now got our more than 17 less than 50 criteria set uh, and, and we can see that we're we're up and running again and again looking at some of these we've got a very competitive product here it's um i can x that one out straight away it's got over a thousand uh, reviews very difficult to get into but i could be able to use that particular listing for ideas from how to craft my um sort of listing uh from my end for example 
Okay, this particular product here, 7,000 revenue, 550 reviews. Um, that's that's slightly higher than what we like, but uh, it's it's not too far off the mark. Okay, not too far off the mark. So you can see that uh, I'm actually diving down. Um, you can, you can basically, I'm hoping you can actually follow the gist of what I'm doing with respect to getting ideas, taking the idea, analyzing it further, diving in a little bit deeper until you actually find something. Now, it could be the case, and I think it's the case here, where you dive down, you, you go down various different rabbit holes and actually come up with a dead end. Um, so I'm not particularly happy with with anything that I'm seeing here. There's, there's not enough um, sort of revenue or there's too much revenue. Okay, so it's basically as a, there's a dominant players in the market, then there's nothing. All right, so there's a big drop off. That's that's basically what I'm seeing here from from the numbers point of view. So I'm I'm going off down down rabbit holes that are not actually leading anywhere, um, sort of meaningful. So what I'll do then is is basically come back to the start, uh, rinse and repeat, do the whole thing again. Just try and find those particular niches, those particular products that you can actually go down and actually you know, get that meaningful data. If you've got some meaningful data, yeah, if you did like this, don't forget you could actually um, sort of star that and add that to your favorites. Um, please inform um, the search keyword. Okay, it's, it's grooming glove, wasn't it? Bathing. Grooming, so I've added that, so it's now going to be in my favorites. So I could actually do that and come back to that later on if I require. Okay, so I hope that was um, insightful with respect to one how ASIN Inspector Pro, all of the features with respect to how to use the categories, I'm sorry, how to use the filters, um, adding in multiple layer filters with the, the more than, less than, and infrasand. And as I've been working through this, I hope you've actually been able to see these yellow pop-up windows coming up. That's that's tips and information on, on how to actually do things as you're hovering over it, okay? So if I just look, hover over here, it actually tells me this button is recover and apply last filters used. Okay, if I'm just jumping over here, it'll tell me, um, so this is the buy box seller inventory on the seller. Okay, so it's, it's very difficult to get lost because ASIN Inspector have built this feature in as you're navigating around the panel. It tells you where you are and, and how to actually apply various different aspects to it. So if anybody's got any questions, I'd, I'd love to be able to, to help you and, and try and um, answer those. So probably now is a good time to, to do that. Otherwise, um, I, I hope that was okay. And, and if you're live with Rob, um, you can certainly ask Rob some questions and I can follow up later, uh, depending on whether we've got the, the connection still going live or not. So back to yourself, Rob. Hey Paul, it's Steve. Hey, Paul. Hello, Steve. How you doing? Good man. Uh, yeah, Rob's. Did that come across okay? Yeah, it came across great. All right. So I, I know my internet was really slow at some points, so I, I wasn't even sure I was still connected. So I, I kept rolling anyway. Yeah. Yep. It was really good, man. Uh, we have any questions? Yeah, we got questions. Hold on one second, Paul. Hold yeah, on. please. For the presentation. <laughs> My question is, how long does it typically take you to find uh, what you call the golden nugget? Like your, once you've found your three products, like on average, based on your experience so far, how long does it typically take you to select something? Did you hear that, Paul? No. Todd was asking, uh, after you select your 10 products, how long on average does it take you to figure out which one is your golden nugget. 
Um, well, to start with, it's actually finding those 10 products can take quite a while um, to, ge to actually generate your, your short list. Um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes I'm, I'm really lucky and I'll come across a number of different products really, really quickly. Uh, and I've done that numerous times on, on these live uh, walkthroughs, for example. Um, but uh, assuming that I've got myself a sort of five to 10 products on my short list, I can then go off and I shall run each one of those through our super product selector. And if you haven't got that, Steve can get you the link there. So there's no problems. Uh, it's just on our homepage on the website. But use that because it has a number of set criteria. And each, each product will probably take you 45 minutes to an hour um, to run through and really, really dig in and, and do your homework uh, because it's worth doing. It's worth doing. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else with a question? <coughs> All right, Paul. Thank you so much for sharing that with us today. But guess what we're going to do? We're going to compare and find out the other software products that we're looking at. So we're going to compare uh, Jungle Scout, and we're also going to compare AmSuite, and we're going to find out which one have the best products or whether they all have their own attributes and whether they're all great. So we're going to get into that, and I'm going to share Jungle Scout next. Yeah, I think that's a really good, you know, because there are a number of different uh, software options are available. Everybody likes their own little thing. I like ASIN Inspector. Someone else will like Jungle Scout. Some of others will, will like you know, sort of doing it manually. So it's, it's good to actually understand what is available out there um, and, and to have that, that walkthrough so you can actually uh, look for yourself, see what it's all about. All right, team, thanks very much for listening. I hope that was uh, so insightful. I hope you learned something. Um, like I say, any questions, Rob's there. He's, uh, he's your man. And, uh, and the team there, so which is really cool. Thanks very much for listening.